this mushroom is called Kingstropharia, or wine cap mushroom. When it's young, the cap will be a little bit purple, but now it's it's brownish. And if you do a spore print for the mushroom, you will see a purple spore print. Actually, you can tell from、uh, the appearance of the gills; it's a little bit purplish. But these two are are a little bit old, too old to harvest them. Here's one. It's over here. Another one is here. And the third one, let me see. Yeah, it's here. Actually, this one is、um, still very fresh. You can see that its cap is still very purple,、uh, very young. So at this stage, I think the perfect time to harvest the wine cap. Now here we have five wine cap mushrooms. These three are mature mushrooms. These two are younger ones. You can see at the younger stage,、uh, the mushroom has a partial veil, which is this one. This partial veil protects the gills of this mushroom. When they grow older, the partial veil will fall off and degenerate into the ring on the stem. These rings can fall off as well. You can see this one; it doesn't have a ring. So to identify the wine cap, you'd better take a spore print. These are pretty old wine cap mushrooms. You can feel it's very soggy here. There's a party going on here. Here. <laughs> Very excited to show you what we what I find here. Check this out. This is morel mushroom. Still edible. I don't know, but it's very strong, very sturdy, and grow just beneath this dead tree.、Um, maybe it's elm tree, but I can tell because there's no leaves, only some barks over here. But yeah, okay, this is exciting, right? Very nice morel. This mushroom is called dried saddle, or pheasant's back. It usually appears in spring, around the same time when the morel appears. This mushroom belongs to the polypore family. It's an edible mushroom, but when it grows like、uh, larger than your hand, larger than your palm, it will probably be too old to eat. But I think you still can eat. At the outer part of the mushroom, that tends to be a little bit uh, uh, tender than the center part. So pheasant back really likes moisture. I usually find this type of mushroom growing on the log near the river, like this one. So this river really provides a lot of moisture for this mushroom to grow. A pheasant back has a very pleasant taste. Some people think it tastes like a watermelon. It does have a very fresh, interesting flavor. Very leathery.
So on the other side of the river, I found a very nice patch of oyster mushrooms. They look very fresh. Similar to oyster mushroom, the deer mushroom tends to grow on the rotten wood like this one and they usually appear in spring which is the same season as the oyster mushrooms. Usually deer mushrooms only grow singularly but oyster mushrooms grow in clusters. And another important difference between the deer mushroom and the oyster mushroom is that the stem of the deer mushroom always centered on its cap but for uh, oyster mushroom uh, it's not very symmetric so if a beginner mushroom hunter pay attention to these details these characteristics i just mentioned uh, then you will not be confused by these two mushrooms but even if you cannot di differentiate these two mushrooms don't worry they both are edible Personally, I don't quite like the deer mushroom because it has a little bit of the earthy flavor. And uh, this flavor remains even after it's fully cooked. Also, the deer mushroom tends to be very soggy when you cook them. So these two features make them not very delicious. I really don't recommend eating them. This mushroom is called crown tip coral mushroom. Like the coral mushroom is very easy to identify by its appearance, right? It looks like a coral, right? But this type of mushroom has some unique feature. If, if you look at it very, very closely, you can see there is a, some, uh, the tip of the mushroom is like a small crown. So that's why it's called crown tip mushroom, right? So this type of mushroom is edible. It has a little bit of peppery flavor, but be careful when harvesting coral mushrooms because many mushrooms in this species are poisonous. So here's another patch of crown-tipped coral mushrooms. Notice that these mushrooms only grow or generally grow on rotten wood. So if you see another coral-shaped mushrooms grow on the ground, you need to take extra caution they might not be the crown-tipped coral mushroom. There might be other types of coral mushrooms which might be poisonous. Can you see the chicken of the woods over there? Yeah. Take a look at this. This is the chicken of those. This is the earliest chicken of those I have ever seen. It's, it's only mid of May. Um, you can see it from distance because of its bright color. And by the way, this is a good example of a mushroom with bright color being not poisonous. So chicken of the woods belong to the polypore family. Uh, let me show you. It is polypore because the underneath of the cap as pores instead of gills. It doesn't have gills like uh, uh, oyster mushrooms or butter mushrooms. These are purely pores. So most of polypore mushrooms are edible, are not poisonous, sorry. But not all of them are edible. Some uh, may be hard for you to digest, but most of them are not poisonous. Now this one is a little bit dirty. It's hard to clean, so
it's already summertime. The temperature is around 90 degrees today. Uh, we found some interesting mushrooms over here. This mushroom is called uh, gem studded puffball mushrooms. So there are three types of wild puffball mushrooms that are edible. Uh, one is the giant puffball mushroom, another is the pear shaped puffball mushroom, which I have already filmed and uh, talked about in my previous videos. So this one is uh, gem studded puffball mushroom. You can see the cap or the surface of the mushroom has a lot of studs. So that's why it's called jam studded puffball. And, uh, and if you cut it in half, and the meat should be, should be white. It should not be dark or brown or anything else. It should be white. And this one looks very fresh, doesn't have bug holes in, in here. Another difference uh, between the gem studded puffball and pear shaped puffball is that you usually find pear shaped puffballs growing on rotten logs in the uh, summer or fall, while gem studded puffballs appear in the springtime or late spring, early summer. And they usually grow on the ground of uh, like uh, wood chips. I rarely see them growing on the rotten logs. Yeah. And these are fresh, but when these puffballs grow older, if you step on them, they can explode with a lot of spores. That's an that's a interesting way of helping them to spawn. There are so many patches of these mushrooms. Here's one. Here's another one. And uh, there are another, there's another patch. Over there. So this mushroom is called umbrella polypore. Look how beautiful it is. So actually I encountered this mushroom last year the same location and the same time. So this year, after three days of raining, I figured maybe this mushroom will come out again. Let me pick one and take a sniff of the mushroom. Hmm, it's still very fresh. Very pleasant aroma. It is called umbrella polypore. Well, first because it's uh, in the polypore family. Let me show you the flip side of the mushroom. You can see it has uh, a lot of pores instead of gills. And I think the shape of the small mushroom is like an open umbrella. So that's why it's called umbrella polypore. The cap of the mushroom has a light brown color. When it's young, it has a light gray or white color. And this mushroom is not only edible, but it's also very nutritious. Uh, some people say it's as nutritious as shaga and hen of the woods and also reishi mushrooms. It has a lot of antivirus and antibacterial properties. And it's very tasty as well. Let me show you the environment where the umbrella polypore grows. So on my left hand side, there is a, a bird tree. Uh, it has very smooth skin. It's very easy to identify and the leaves is, uh, has a shape like this. And on my right hand side is a hickory nut tree. So this umbrella polypore grows directly above the ground. So it doesn't like uh, the hand of the woods, which usually grows on the stump of the tree. And these two trees actually are very healthy. And it's very close to a creek. So this creek, I think, provides uh, enough moisture for this mushroom to flourish. I'm going to 
take all this mushroom out. 